This is a flippin' nightmare. <laughs> oh. Welcome to the channel, people. To start this wood DIY off, you're gonna need a one by four. And we're gonna need to measure it out to cut it to fit our little Dollar Tree stickers we're going to use, which turns out to be eight and a half inches. So we're gonna just mark our board and then we're going to cut it to size. For the next board, I would cut it at 11. I cut it at 10 and a half, but cut it at 11. Cut that to size, put both the boards on top of one another, and it's gonna leave you a little gap, which we're going to cut for our two by three. And we're just gonna cut the little square to fill the space. This is gonna give us a little pop out piece. Then we need to make a little stand. So just cut you a one and a half inch off your two by three. Now it's time to get down to business. I hate all that petty stuff, but you know, you gotta do it to get to this part. Here's our little stand and we're gonna glue it. So here's the other petty part of like having to glue and nail and all that, but we gotta get these pieces to stick together and we need to be patient people. I know it's rough. I know I completely sympathize, but we gotta do this, okay? So we're going to hot glue these together or not hot glue we'll glue these together <laughs> and then we're going to use our nail gun when it wants to work for us see that light blinking yeah the battery was dead <laughs> if i had a clue i would have made sure it was charged before the video but you know how that goes as i was miring my work i decided i was gonna just smoosh in all the wood glue and then put on our little stand i did not have any brad nails long enough and i could have drilled a hole and then put in a screw but i figured it's a little piece it's a little decor item so we should be able to put some wood glue and then put a clamp on this joint and then let it sit overnight and be confident enough that our piece is not gonna fall apart. So the next day after this dried, we're going to add in our little piece using a drill bit and a wooden dowel. And with this, you wanna make sure your drill bit is slightly bigger than the dowel, but see how this little two by three just fits in that little corner right there. There's no really perfect system for this, but I wanted to create a definite connector <laughs> i guess that's a good way to put it i wanted a definite connector in there than just a wood glue so i created a hole you know beautiful little hole make sure it's deep enough not very shallow and then get all your little bits out there until you're done measuring everything i like to add some shavings back in and of course you know when you make mistakes like i did for this i actually put the hole too far over which is not a big deal if you do that here's how you're going to fix it see how they're you know, I had to draw another one like right next to it. You just take your wood shavings, pack it on in the hole you're not going to use. And then when you put your dowel in with your wood glue, it's going to still hold anyhow and you won't even realize it. However, don't do this. <laughs> My little... I left the lid open wow. on this and it was all dry. So I thought, let's pour it out. And <laughs> After that was all dried, after about four to six hours, I then decided we're going to do like a rainbow, not necessarily a rainbow, but a pretty pastel palette on this wood piece and just started alternating. I did one solid color of all of them before without any blending going on. I just painted in like opposite spots. There was no method to this madness. So, you know, you paint your little pastel colors or regular colors, however you want for this. And then I came back in after this dried with the second coat. So to do this, to create a blended look, I then did half of one color on the paintbrush and half of the other color on the other side of the paintbrush and just started going down. This was, you know, it takes a little bit of patience, so bear with it. Sometimes you're going to need to add a little bit of water to your paintbrush to just kind of get the colors to kind of blend together. You'll see the point of this in just a little bit. Now, if you don't want to blend it, you go right ahead, but I felt like the blending was necessary. So here's an little actual you know half yellow half pink and then you just go down and see how it starts to just 
pull the two colors together and create a really smooth blend. Once that dried, we're now going to use our Dollar Tree stickers. I thought, you know, I hear creators and even I have said, you know, use your Dollar Tree stickers. You know, if you don't have Cricut, blah, blah, blah. Don't do it, people. I'm here to let you know, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it for this. <laughs> I don't know what other situations, but definitely don't use these type of stickers to do this type of project. Now, this is something I do all the time with vinyl where I'll put a color down, I'll paint over it, pull the stickers off. It did not work out well for this project. Also, when I said the 11 inches instead of the 10 and a half, see how I don't have the Y on there? I didn't have enough space, so my plan was to take a Y off, put it on the end before I paint it white. However, on a personal note, my kid comes home with an attitude distracting me and I end up painting the whole thing white <laughs> and forget to switch the Y out. Oh, on top of all the problems that I have going forward from this moment on, I was just frustrated enough, but I'm going to show you how I fixed that in a moment. But before we do, it was so wild how these stickers they like completely absorbed the chalk paint. I was gonna pull them off while they were still wet, but they were so flimsy and thin. I was so nervous that they were gonna smear the paint everywhere. So I'm like, let's let this dry. And then I will pull them off. It'd be okay, you know, they'll stiffen up. They never stiffened up. I was really shocked even after sitting this under a fan for a few hours and Dixie Belle paint one thin coat does not take that long to dry. But look at this. It literally took me hours to peel this off of here. This is a flippin' nightmare. <laughs> oh. After the two to three hours of peeling this off and having to walk away and leave it for another day, this is where we are. <laughs> so I had to get the rest of the sticker off. So I took a damp, wet paper towel and started smooshing it on here and rubbing the, you know, the extra stickiness off with my fingers. And then I thought, let's distress this up. I wasn't planning to distress it, but I gotta, I got to figure something out. We gotta fix it. I can't just, you know, scrap this. I'm too far in now we're gonna just keep going I gotta put my Y on here so we're tracing the Y I gotta get this chalk paint off so let's start wetting the Y so I wet the chalk paint up which is kind of like reactivating it a little bit and then started to scrape it off and remember how I said earlier you'll see the point of us blending you can see like how in the letters showing like the paint looks very smooth together underneath there's not like harsh lines everything's very nice and blended together I came back in with my white paint and started going around all the letters to fix as much of the paint and the sticker <laughs> damage that I could possibly fix once I was finished with that I decided that we're just gonna have to create highlights in this it was not initially the look I was going for but I'm super happy that I ended up doing it it really brought a dimension to this and made it look very childlike which I wasn't going for but this would look amazing in a kid's room just as a little piece of decor and honestly I'm always telling my kids you know little happy positive things and this is just something I could see me putting in one of my girls rooms to add a little bit of extra depth into it I did take some brown and go over the highlights on the edges just to help that pop out some more because everything is very pastel and very light and even did some tracing around the edges where there was some you know more mess up from the sticker originally my plan was to throw a magnet on here with some florals you could switch out but since I thought child I'm like let's put some brown doo-doo looking brown <laughs> raise stencil on here because it's going to be our back you know our back part of our stencil and then add some color over it and that was it for this one for this next one we're going to need a one by one and cut it to 12 inches 
we're gonna create a little coffee cup holder with just using a stick and for our base we're gonna need this one by four I mean are they ever really what they say they are I don't think so <laughs> but I'm cutting it to about five to six inches really this is kind of your preference with the size of your base I knew this is for my mama I knew she was using big coffee cups for this so I scaled up and then I'm taking this one by three and cutting it to a square so it's like our little base that's going to go in the center of this so first we're going to take the two larger pieces put them together and then we're going to just hit them up with some wood glue smoosh it all down in there rub it really well and you're going to want to clamp this together or set them you know on something with something very heavy to hold them together here's a here's a clamp look at me look at me helping y'all out look at this clamp so once that dries you're then going to want to measure your square so we can get it as centered as possible and then glue this down so that way we can clamp this on top of the other piece yeah, there was a lot of drying going on around here people okay a lot of patience a lot of drying whenever we're using wood glue and clamps there's a lot of it at the bare minimum i try to let it dry at least four to six hours before i attempt anything like this but this was a next day event again I'm using a dowel and a drill bit and we're putting a hole in the bottom that's going to attach to our base if you wanted to use a drill bit and go up through the bottom with the screw you're completely welcome to do that I didn't have a screw long enough to find the center we're gonna just make a cross X pattern to find the center and drill straight down and then we're going to cut our dowel to size so it fits in our holes and wood glue it on up and then let this dry now if your dowel is a little loose feel free to put some little shavings in there you're not hurting nothing all it's going to do is just add to that stickiness and as you can see here i was not afraid to just lather it all over <laughs> like an abundant amount and more drying of course 90 percent of the hardware in my mom's house is silver and i didn't have any silver hooks so i'm just going to take dixie bell's gilding wax and go over all of these and i even do that with the screws once i screw these in see how it just turns them silver i think there's also something called buff and rub that does a very similar thing but I use Dixie Bell and this is Magnif Amazing. So it's what I use. Here's our little knob that I got from Hobby Lobby on clearance for 99 cents. The little leaf part is a dark blue. You cannot tell it by looking at it, but it is a dark blue. So we're going to take some stencils that I had on hand, mix up some black and some mountain blue paint to give a dark blue. And then we're going to just add our stencils on here and i'm gonna stipple it on here light and dark in different areas to give it a very french country type of look and i'm not going to bore you with a ton of stenciling but i did want to show you that you can take because one of the things that i did do with these stencils because they are very like stiff plastic type material is I did use them to wrap our little pole that we have going on here so once I get to this part and look how pretty it is I first mark where I am going to put our little cup holders and then I take the plastic stencil and I start to press against the pole in a very I don't use no painters to anything because I want this to be able to move see how I'm pressing it now to the other side you can literally move and turn this as you go and if you do not this is a great little technique if you do not have vinyl where you can absolutely lay it on there and you're doing something that has actual corners and curves you can slowly move the plastic stencil to work for you when I was all done with that, I then drilled a hole in the top and screwed our little knob piece in. 
Once the paint dried, I came back in with a Sharpie oil marker and added some of those black highlights just to give the stencil a little bit more of a pop. And that is it for this one, people. For this simple DIY, we're going to use these two pretty colors, Moss and Tea Rose, Vintage Tea Rose, and you're just going to cut two pieces of 4x4, four four, and these are roughly one and a half inches thick. Not exact, but you know, I sanded the sides down, figured you've seen enough of me cutting in the video, so I saved you this part. You're welcome, okay? Get a 4x4 four four from Home Depot or Lowe's and, you know, cut it down to size. Then paint each one a color, you know, let them dry, and then I did sand these down to give them a little bit of a rustic look. And I used a 220 grit sandpaper for this. The reason I didn't go lower is because I didn't want it to create like gouges and scrape marks in my wood pieces. And the lower you go, the rougher the sandpaper. So I feel like 220 is a safe bet. I am mixing, <laughs> we are out of white acrylic paint. I'm mixing white acrylic paint with some spackling. We're going to create a raised stencil on these two little blocks. And that's all we're doing for this. I really feel like little block decor is a big thing. And if you know me, I loved raised stencils. So I thought let's do different colors and keep the same stencil. You could do the same colors and different stencils. That would be a nice idea too. But I felt using different colors with the same stencil would tie them in together and really loved how these turned out at the end of the day. You're welcome to use a vinyl for this as well. I like using these plastic reusable stencils. They're easy to just wipe off with the spackling. Just be mindful of how fast you're going when you're applying your spackling and how much you're pressing because if you're not pressing your hand, see how my hand is over it? If you're not pressing your hand in certain spots as you're applying it, it will smush underneath of your stencil creating a lot of bleed. But I think I do okay. What do you all think? As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, people. I hope you got some learning and some entertainment out of today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these wood DIYs is your favorite. Until next time, bye! So I thought it would be fun to actually take you guys over to my mom's. All right, so we just pulled up and she already has the, if you watch the Kirkland's video, she has that up on the door already. Look at that. If you haven't seen this, I made this as well. She has it all set up here. It's going to be loud. So it is what it is. It's real life. Look, here's this. I made this as well. And then here is, remember I said in the video, if you watch the long one, she has that too. And this is another thing that I made that I, I didn't make a video of it, but I painted this for her. And she keeps it out on her entertainment center. There's the books. Look, <laughs> in the browsing video, remember at Target, if you watch those, I said she got two of the little blue pumpkins. So in her, if you have not watched my, we did, um, we made, let me show you some of it. So I made this in a video and a bunch of other little things. They had a laundry room, a bedroom turned into a laundry room. So this is her little coffee bar area. She's been working on getting little decor pieces for. I posted this on Instagram the one time, but she got low so it matches with everything. I just go put these on here. Super yeah, cute. Too big for down there. <laughs> look, at, look at the size.
size of these monsters, Mom? What size cups of coffee are we drinking here? <laughs> hey, look at that. It fits. It does fit. Beautiful. Look at that. It's so pretty. Yeah, but that's great that way. It's not taking up my cabinet space. I love it. It looks beautiful.